Yellowstone, Jamie Dutton. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor, continuing my analysis of major characters from Yellowstone. Keep in mind that as a consequence of the needs of character development, plot advancement and story arc, certain aspects won't necessarily fit within a strict analysis. Keep that in mind. Also, there may be spoilers ahead, so you've been warned. And finally, please do share this work to other places where people talk about Yellowstone and enjoy analysing the characters. This will open up further discussion and enlightenment for them. James Michael Jamie Dutton is the son of big cattle ranch owner John Dutton. He works as an attorney. Jamie was born in Bozeman, Montana, as James Michael Randall to Garrett and Phyllis Randall. His father beat his mother to death when Jamie was three months old. There's a possibility, therefore, that his father may have been a narcissist, thus the potential for a genetic predisposition to be passed down to Jamie, and the loss of his mother in such circumstances could well have created a loss of control environment. Jamie was then adopted by Evelyn Dutton and her husband John, and he came to live with a ranching family. Before John Dutton inherited the ranch, his ancestors, Jane and Margaret Dutton, had already settled in the Yellowstone vicinity. Jamie's birth name, however, was given him before adoption, so he's not named after his Dutton forefather. John and Evelyn Dutton, and four children. Jamie has two brothers, Lee, had two brothers, Lee and Casey, and a sister, Beth. They grew up together on the Yellowstone Dutton Ranch. Casey extended the family, marrying Monica Long and having a son named Tate, Jamie's nephew. His older brother, Lee, died when he was protecting the family ranch in a feud with the Broken Rock Indian Reservation. Lee's brother, Casey, came too late to help him as he died of a fatal gunshot wound. Sometime in the past, Beth, his sister, asked Jamie for help when she had become pregnant and wanted to obtain an abortion. Demonstrating his desire to try to do the right thing, he took her to the Indian Health Services Free Clinic on the Broken Rock Indian Reservation to keep the surgery as secret as possible. He kept the fact that they would not be able to do it without sterilisation from his sister. When she found out, that had a permanent impact upon their relationship. When Jamie came to work closely with his assistant Christina, their relationship slowly evolved from a professional one into an intimate one. However, when things took a turn for the worse professionally, the same thing happened to their relationship. Later, when Jamie had started to live with his family, Christina called him and told him that they needed to talk. Jamie felt that this was about what had happened after their split up, but did not expect that this to be the fact that Christina was pregnant. Soon after telling him, she left and gave Jamie the choice to either start his own family or stay with the family that she despised. Notwithstanding the offer to be with the woman that he got pregnant and therefore to have an involvement with his child, he decided to choose his adoptive family, which might suggest an absence of emotional empathy on his part. It was later revealed to him that he was adopted and that his biological father was alive and therefore he distanced himself from the Dutton family again, perhaps showing a self-serving purpose, and he did this in order to become closer to his real father. This might seem a rather questionable step to take, given the fact that his father had beaten his mother to death, and therefore you might query the judgment call that was made by Jamie, that he assues a family that has looked after him from being three months old, and distance himself from them in order to engage with a man that had done nothing to look after him and indeed had made his life difficult by murdering his mother. When Christina learned that he distanced himself from the Dutton family, she then decided it was time to reunite Jamie and he was introduced to the fact that he had a son. 
The child became named Jamie. After his father applied for him, Jamie went to Harvard Law School to become an attorney, leaving the Yellowstone Dutton Ranch for some time. He graduated from law school and began working as an attorney at law, eventually helping out his father with legal matters concerning the Yellowstone Dutton Ranch. He was asked by Governor Perry and Attorney General Stewart to participate in the Attorney General elections. At a certain point, there were concerns about his father having too much influence by way of his son, but as father and son grew apart, and Jamie ran against the wishes of his father. His father and Beth came up with another participant, Cassidy Reed. Jamie was interviewed by Sarah Nguyen in the heat of battle, and he made his father look bad to win votes, which shows, again, that he's rather self-centred. But just before the elections, he then changed his mind as the conflict with his father became too much for him to bear. He therefore withdrew from the elections. Later on, Reed was sworn in. After it turned out, she ran unopposed. His father gave him a new opportunity to welcome him back into the fold, and Jamie went to live in the bunkhouse, and he started to work on his family's ranch as one of the hands. When the Montana Livestock Association had taken too many liberties in the ways of taking out their enemies, John Dutton had to resign from that office. He promised Governor Perry to appoint a successor within a week. Originally, he chose his son Casey, who rejected the proposal, and therefore Jamie was appointed as the new commissioner. Before Cassidy Reed got a chance to start, Governor Perry found a way to appoint Jamie to the Attorney General's office as acting Attorney General. Perry was able to convince John Dutton, so Jamie got the job that he'd wanted for, and did so with his father's consent, as is often the case that he seeks his father's approval. Jamie Dutton is certainly an interesting character. Adopted as a Dutton, he has a familial background could well propel him into the category of a narcissist. A father who carried the genetic predisposition, an upbringing that included a lack of control environment. Furthermore, he was then catapulted into the cauldron of life with the Duttons, which included the early death of his adopted mother, although he believed her to be his real mother, as she fell from a horse. At an early age, Jamie had already experienced plenty of lack of control environments. Jamie is the most intelligent member of the Dutton family. He is ambitious, selfish, but often appears weak, needing to be handheld in certain situations. It's also quite striking in the way that he's repeatedly easily influenced by other characters. For example, Beth required him to assist her with the unwanted pregnancy. He did so. It might be suggested that he did so out of emotional empathy for his sister. Or, given the behaviour of Beth Dutton, more of which later, it may well have been that he felt that he had no choice but to help her. Beth repeatedly turns up at his workplace and home, uninvited. Indeed, on one occasion, she breaks and enters. Yet every time, rather than initially remove her, or call law enforcement to do so, he allows her to subject him to one of her tirades. He repeatedly seeks the approval of his adopted father, John Dutton, allowing himself to be bullied into doing the bidding of his father as Attorney General. He allows himself to be drawn into Sarah Atwood, the attorney for market equities, into her parallel universe as she entices him intimately. This repeated weakness that Jamie exhibits, whereby other characters hold such sway over him, would appear to fly in the face of the narcissist's absolute and pathological need for control. Nevertheless, Jamie has exhibited on numerous occasions self-interest, selfishness and manipulative behaviours. The season three finale ended with a coordinated attack on the Dutton family in an attempt to kill John Dutton, Beth and Casey. The final moments saw John Dutton getting shot on the side of a road while helping a woman change a flat tyre, a group of gunmen storming into Casey's office and a package exploding in Beth's office. In season four, it was revealed that the man behind the attack was Jamie's biological father, Garrett Randall. When Jamie discovered the truth about the attack on the Duttons, he kept the information a secret. Secrecy, lack of accountability, absence of emotional empathy. Jamie's decision to keep the truth from the Duttons ends up coming back to bite him. 
Once Beth discovers that Jamie's known the truth, she confronts him and gives him an ultimatum. Jamie must kill his own father, go to prison, or lose his own life at the hands of her husband, Rip Wheeler. Jamie decides to kill his own father, and then gets blackmailed by his sister when she takes a photo of him dumping the body. For him to be able to do this to his biological father, who previously he seemed to be building bridges with and wanted to get to know better, exhibits a lack of emotional empathy and selfishness. It was revealed via flashbacks that the Duttons lost their mother, Evelyn, in a horseback riding accident that occurred in 1997, when the siblings were teenagers. She was out riding with Beth and Casey when she fell off her horse. Jamie blamed his sister for the loss in a nasty confrontation in the barn. To accuse her of causing the death of their mother, even when she did not, amounts to a false accusation, acting with a sense of entitlement, a lack of emotional empathy. That confrontation was way back in season one when it looked like John Dutton was dying from cancer. Jamie and Beth had a conversation that resulted in one moment where he compared his sister to the disease. It's the body's cells so deformed they turn on the body itself, start feeding. Cancer doesn't have much foresight, so it kills its hosts, which kills it, he says. Cancer is suicide from the inside out. That's what you are, Beth. Notwithstanding the clear nastiness of Beth Dutton, more about that in due course, the fact that he says that to his own sister exhibits insult and a lack of emotional empathy. Jamie has hooked up with market equities lawyer Sarah Atwood and appears to be falling for her schemes. After having sex, she asks him, why aren't you governor? You clearly have the skill for it. You orchestrated the lease and the build, leaving no legal recourse for the company that completely fucked, Sarah tells him. Get you elected, Governor. Reinstate our lease and push through our project with a contract you cannot weasel out of and save this state from its policy of hiding its head in the sand and hoping that the rest of the world just walks by. Jamie falls for such flattery and has no issue about bringing about the downfall of his adopted father and the family's precious ranch. After his family's attacked in the Yellowstone Series 3 finale, Jamie gets a call from Rip telling him he can't get hold of anyone. In response, Jamie just simply says that Rip shouldn't call him anymore. That response demonstrates a lack of emotional empathy for his other family members, and is a form of silent treatment. Jamie then essentially cuts himself off from the Duttons, and does not contact his father in the months that he was recovering in hospital. Absent silent treatment, isolation, Lack of accountability. Lack of emotional empathy. When Jamie picks up a drunken Beth from the Deerfield Club in season one, they get into an argument. Their fight in the car turns physical, as Beth calls her brother soft and insists he doesn't know real loss. She then grabs a gun from the glove compartment and holds it to her chin while telling her brother, you've got to watch him die to lose him. Calling her bluff, Jamie tells Beth to pull the trigger, not thinking she would actually do it. She does, but misses, and Jamie wrestles the gun away. He once again demonstrates to invite her to shoot herself, demonstrates an absence of emotional empathy. It's also evident that Jamie would do anything to gain his father's approval. But, in a fit of pique, he spills various secrets to journalist Sarah Nguyen, and then goes to great lengths to keep her from publishing the story, thus showing a lack of accountability and then a necessity to quash the story. He meets Sarah in a remote area to discuss it, and, and make it clear that he refused to be quoted. But he's not able to do that, and Sarah won't stop the story. He insists he said hurtful things about his father out of anger, and says that it would destroy his family and their legacy if the story were published. But Sarah disagrees, with one man owning such a large part of the country, and says the Dutton land should be a national park. At that point... Jamie loses control and smashes her head into a car window before putting his hands around her neck and killing her. Naturally, murdering someone in such cases, in such a case might hint at a form of ignited fury. It certainly shows that he had no emotional empathy for this person and that she posed a threat to his control and had to be nullified. 
His sister Beth's hatred for him began when they were teenagers, and she turned to her brother for help when she got pregnant with Rip's baby. Beth asked Jamie to help her get an abortion, but in an effort to be discreet, Jamie took her to the reservation clinic, which required a hysterectomy when terminating a pregnancy. Jamie agreed to the procedure without Beth's knowledge or consent, which as an aside I find rather remarkable and a bit of strange writing, but we'll leave that there. Taking away Beth's ability to have children was again a moment of him not exhibiting emotional empathy. There are plenty of narcissists behaviour which could make a case for him to be seen as a narcissist. However, he did give his fa real father a chance in order to make amends and to get to know him, and he was prepared to listen to him rather than just dismiss him because of him murdering his mother. He also has had a decent enough relationship with Casey for the main part. Even when severely provoked by his sister, who threatened to remove his child from him, he could have run her over in his car, but he refrained from doing so. Jamie doesn't exhibit a need for fuel, nor does he exhibit a pathological need for control over people. He does have a lot of narcissistic indicators, but the way that he is weak with regard to how other characters use him, and how he repeatedly seeks his father's approval, and in a convoluted way of that of his sister also, negates the suggestion that he has that entrenched need for control. He often seeks to do the most logical thing, albeit that invariably results in him receiving his father's disapproval. The family gives everything to the ranch. Rip is committed out of a sense of loyalty by having been given a second chance by John Dutton. Beth Dutton is fiercely protective of the ranch for reasons we shall explore in due course. John Dutton is singularly obsessed with the preservation of the ranch and its legacy. Casey wishes to preserve the ranch out of his sense of it being the right thing to do for his son Taint. Thus, the family, although based on different drivers, are all aligned in protecting the Dutton ranch. Jamie does not operate in the same way. He is actually driven by pragmatism and logic, compared to the different drivers of the other family members, and this makes him something of an outcast with them. Jamie is self-centred. He's easily led, selfish and arrogant. He often thinks he knows better than other people. Sometimes he is proven correct, but he lacks principles. He bends in the wind influenced by the actions of others. He does have some emotional empathy, but it is limited, and he is driven by strong narcissistic traits of pride, vanity, argumentativeness, and resentment. Accordingly, what is Jamie Dutton? Jamie Dutton is narcissistic. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.